Hello to the urologist everywhere and welcome to the electronic urology teaching course. My name is Mohamed Nuruddin. I'm one of the urologists in Basingstoke Hospital and I'm an assistant lecturer in urology. And this will be the second talk in the electronic course and it's about the technology and imaging which is again a very crucial topic in the clinical life and one of the tables in the FRCS exam. We will start our talk with the Euroflowmetry, which is a really important device in the day-to-day -day practice. Measurement of the flow rate provides a visual image of the trends of a patient's urinary stream. The urine flow rate is measured in mL per second, and it is a principal investigation in the male LUTs assessment. The machine of the urophlometry is composed of a funnel, which collects the urine, and this funnel is positioned on the top of a spinning disc that will start to rotate with different speed according to the amount of the urine that reaches it in a specific time. And all of these components are connected to the capacitance, which transforms that movement into a graph, and this gives us the values of the urine flow. Graph usually calculates the flow in mL per second, and this starts with a peak initially, then the flow slows down till it stops, and this gives us a characteristic shape of the Euroflowmetry curve. From the flow and the curve, the total voilet volume is calculated, the Q match, which is the maximum amount of urine passed in a second, and then the bladder scan will be done at the end, so the post void and residual volume can be assessed. In the normal adult, the average Qmax will be around 21 bell per second, but this could vary with the age and the gender as shown in this table. The curve shape itself may help to indicate about some of the pathologies in the urinary flow. For example, the bladder outlet obstruction due to enlarged prostate will give a slow flow as in the blue curve. In case of urethral stricture, it may give you what we call the plateau button due to the fibrous in the elastic features of the stricture scar. The sow tooth appearance is usually seen in the case of sphincteric dyssynergia. However, analysis of the curve should be taken with caution due to the presence of multiple artifacts for various reasons. So, for example, any cough during the flow may give a sharp spike. Straining of a valve maneuver will appear in the flow as a wider increased flow. Patients should be asked not to squeeze on the urethra to avoid interruption of the flow. And they should also be very careful not to knock the funnel by their legs, as this may give a spike during the flow. The other important section to discuss will be the scopes and tools of the urology. The rigid cystoscopy set is a very important tool used in almost all the endurology procedures. For it, you need to have a sheath, and it comes with different sizes from pediatrics 1 up to 17 or up to 22 French and 24. A bridge is also used to allow insertion of guide wires and other small instruments. Then this all is connected to telescopic lens system. As we said, the sheath comes in different diameters from 17 up to 25 French, and an average lens is usually 30 centimeter. Traditionally, the rod lens system was used, but this nowadays in the rigid scopes has been replaced with the Hopkins rod system, in which the lens have a smaller diameter and this allow clear images to be seen. On the other hand, the flexible scopes use different types of optical system, which is a fibro optic system. And this system in which the light fibers are used to transfer the images, which is quite similar to the fibers need to transfer the light. 
but the differences is usually in the coherence and the arrangement of the fibers. That's why the picture of the fiber optic scope will usually appear in a honeycomb arrangement. The semi-rigid ureteroscope, which is also a very important neurology tool, comes in the diameter ranging from 7, which is the skinny one, to the big 10 French scope. And its length is usually around 34 centimeters, and its working channel is usually 3.4 French in diameter. The flexible ureterinoscopy on the other side varies from 5.9 to 9 French in a diameter, and its length is around usually 80 cm with 3.4 French working channel diameter. The modern digital scope is another fancy scope which allow better images, but they are usually heavier and thicker at the tip. They are relying on a transferring images from the digital camera system that they have from the fiber tip to an integrated monitor system. The diathermy is also another very important tool that is very commonly used in the urology. Any urologist should be able to differentiate between the mechanism by which the monopolar system works and the bipolar system. And as shown in the picture, the monopolar depends on having a complete circuit through the target to return back through a ground electrode, while the bipolar circuit is closed through the instrument itself. These variability make a huge difference between the two types as shown in the terms of the energy, heating and dispersion. In general, the two settings can have the effect of coagulation if they were used in interrupted and in less frequent manner. If they were used in continuous and more frequent sequence, they will cause a cutting effect. Some special instruments can be used also at a diathermy, and they are needed to be very well known. For example, the harmonic, which is a very commonly used instrument in the laparoscopic field. It relies in converting a form of ultrasound energy into a mechanical energy, which will cause a heat transformation and allow denaturation in the tissues and separation after. The Ligasure works differently though. It relies mainly on a bipolar diathermy power with pressure effect, then an incorporated knife is used after that to make separation. The daily practice tools are a pass or fail point in any question. It is out of question that all urologists should be very well aware of the catheter sizes and its standard colors, also the catheter tips and their differences. The standard catheter lens is usually 43 centimeters, and for the pediatrics one, it is usually 30 centimeters. This picture explains the differences in the sizes and the different tips also. The caster size is measured usually by the Scherer measure or the French gauge system. One millimeter equals to three Scherer. And we mean by the size is the outer circumference of the catheter. And as a circular object, the diameter will equal the circumference divided on a constant. The catheter forming materials are variant. It could be latex with either Teflon or silicon coating, silicon catheters, and some of them will come with a hydrogel coating, especially those which are used for the intermittent self casterization The guide wire is another extremely important tool for any urologist. The average length of most of the wire's types is usually 150 centimeters, and the usual diameter is 0.025 inches, which is almost too French. The wire core is formed of either stainless steel or nitinol. 
Wires come in different types to serve different functions. The common sensor tip guide wire is the most commonly used one, which has a hydrophilic tip. The Tarome wire is coated on its whole length with a hydrophilic coat, which make it much flimsy and easier to access different kinks and tighter areas. The Amplet Super Stiff Wire is usually used for the PC nail axis due to its stiff core owing to its stainless steel core with a polytetra fluoroethylene cover. The laparoscopy basic principles are important for every urologist to know also. The stack is usually formed of a monitor, camera control unit, light source, insufflator system and the video recording machine as shown in this picture. The access way varies according to the operation, surgeon skills and the approach used. The various needle could be used in the transperitoneal approach which relies on puncturing the abdominal wall with a spring-loaded needle and test the entrance of the peritoneal cavity before starting inflation. The VisiBoard system is commonly used nowadays, in which the camera go into a port to see the place where the port has been inserted after making the port incision. The Oben Hassan technique is used to make a visual incision to the abdomen layers to reach the space needed. In the urology field nowadays, imaging is a very important way in reaching the correct diagnosis. Urologists at all the level of the FRCS exam should be aware of the different imaging modalities used in the urology, the indication on how they are performed. The ultrasound imaging, which is a cheap, safe modality that is really widely used in the urology practice nowadays. It relies mainly on a piezoelectrical crystal that generates an electrical energy that will be converted into a sound wave. The frequency of the sound produced is determined by the geometry of that crystal. Ultrasound waves are propagated through the body tissue at a speech which varies dependent on the tissue composition. When the sound wave hits an interface between the tissues, it may be transmitted, refracted, absorbed or reflected. On the reflected sound, a proportion will pass back to the transducer where the piezoelectric process is reversed, and the sound is converted to an electrical impulse, and this generates an image. The more the frequency of the probe, the less the penetration, and the more is the resolution. As shown in these different pictures, it depends on how is the frequency, how far it can penetrate to get a better or less better in the quality of the image. For example, in the abdomen, 3 MHz probe is a preferred one, which can allow better penetration power. In the testicular ultrasound, the 12 to the 18 MHz probe is the usually one used. In the transrectal ultrasound, the 10 MHz probe is a preferred one. The modern neurology diagnostics are based mainly now on the different types of the CT scans. The concept of the CT is based mainly on the presence of an X-ray tube and a race detector, which is start to do turns around the patient, and this will create the single slice of a CT picture. Then the whole rotating device move along the required scanned area to get different cuts. Then a software is used to form reconstructive films using these different cuts. Different CTs varies in the cut size, the area scanned, 
and also the timing of injecting and capturing the contrast. For example, in the CTKUB, it is an uncontrast study from the 11th rib usually to the greater trochanter of the femur, taken at 1 mm slices. Its main aim to show the stone site's size density and also help in planning for the treatment as in the case of the PCNL or shockwave lysotripsy. The standard CTKUB will expose the patient to 3 to 5 millisievert radiation dose. The CT renal, on the other hand, is designed mainly to assess the parenchymal disease of the kidneys. To do that, it has multiple phases. It takes first a pre-contrast phase, then an arterial phase at the 30 seconds after injecting the contrast, then a corticomodulary phase at 60 seconds, then at 100 seconds it takes a post-contract phase. Doing of that, exposing the patient to 4 to 8 millisievert radiation dose. In the CT urogram, the main need for it is to assess the urinary tract. So it is a one millimeter slice scan with a pre-contrast and delayed contrast study. Due to its small slices and double scanning, so it is a high exposure scan, leading average to 20 millisievert radiation exposure. So recently the split polar CT came out. It relies mainly on injecting half of the contrast and by the time of eight minutes to inject the other half. Then to take a single scan after that, so in a series of images, patient will have an ephrogenic phase and a delayed excretory phase. And this will decrease the exposure radiation to five to eight millisievert only. In the last decade, the MRI has been very popular in the urology field, especially the prostate field. To simplify its physics, we need to know that our body as a material is formed of an atoms and there is electrons turning and moving around it. In the resting normal situation, the protons around move and spine randomly. When they are exposed to a magnetic field, they take a special alignment. When the magnetic field switches off, in order for them to return back, they release some energy. And this energy is captured and converted into an image. By varying the sequence of the pulses applied and collected, different types of images are created. The T1 is a longitudinal relaxation time, while the T2 measures the transverse relaxation time. In these images, the contrast brightness are predominantly determined by the T2 properties of tissue. In general, T1 and T2 weighted images can be easily differentiated by looking through the bladder or the CSF in the spines. Urine in the bladder will be dark in the T1 and it will be bright in the T2 weighted images. The other important sequence of the MRI is the diffuse weight images.
It relies mainly on the Brownian movement of the water molecules between the tissues. In our body, water moves freely between the different cells. In the case of the presence of dense tissues, as in the cancer cells, for example, this will cause a restriction in the diffusion of the water, which will appear as a hyper-intense area or a restricted diffusion area on the diffusion weight images. To standardize the reporting of these images, radiologists use the BIRAD system to report any suspected area in the prostate. It is a scale from 1 to 5, and according to the side shape size of the lesions, it uses the different sequence of the MRI to give each lesion a score, as shown in these tables. The importance of that is shown as in the precision trial that using this score can predict the probability to detect cancer and this helped it in advising people to or against having prostate biopsy when they are referred with a suspected prostate cancer. Recently, as the BIRAD system is purely a radiological score, so the NICE guidelines recommended to use the Likert score in reporting as it takes in consideration other factors as the family history, the BSA density, so this added a lot in the power of the score. In the current era, the nuclear medicine scans has made much changes in the urology field. The main idea in this field is to use a radioactive material which will be injected and attached to another material that have a special affinity to the targeted organ. Then by using a camera camera, this will allow to detect the emitted radiation from these special materials. For example, in the DMSA scan, the technetium-99 is used to be combined with the dimer captosuccinic acid, which has an affinity to bind with the proximal tubules, and then it radiates. So this will allow to detect the functional units of the kidney and if there is any scars on this kidney. It's a long scan, which usually takes three to four hours. In the MAX3 renal scan, the technetium-99 is combined with the mercaptoacetyl triglycine, which 90% of it is secreted through the distal convoluted tubule, and the rest is filtered by the glomerulus. It measures mainly the excretory function of the kidney. It takes around 20 minutes. The scan is demonstrated into a curve, showing a vascular uptake phase, a concentration parenchymal phase, and then excretory phase. Different pathologies will show different curves. The normal curve is called type 1. Type 2 is the obstructed curve, which the excretory phase is really prolonged. Type 3 is the equivocal curves, and we usually use forcimide, which will be used to understand the nature more whether it will emit or not. Type 4 is a delayed excretion type. The Boone scan is another type of the radionucleotide scans. It also uses technetium-99, but is attached to the methylene diphosphonate, which has a high affinity to the osteoplast cells. This allows to detect any bony areas with high osteoplastic activities, as in the bony mets of the prostate cancer, for example. There is a term called the super scan in which there is a high loads of meds in the bones which allow the uptake of the whole radioactive material and prevent the rest of the material to be excreted by the kidney at the time of the scan. So nor the kidney or the bladder will appear in the scan which they usually appear normally. At the end, there are few points that needed to be remembered at the end of this talk. The pattern and artifacts of the Euroflow are really important point, the difference between the diathermy types, 
the scopes and the uses of the different tools in the urology and the mechanism and the indication of the different scans. And finally, thanks for your attention and feel free to send any question on the email which is provided here and I will answer them once they are possible. I'll be very grateful if you can fill the feedback to help to improve this session which is provided in the link in the first comment.